Dr. Connery, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, please tell me more. I know you're trying to create a pandemic. Uh, make sure I get the name right. Racial and Health Disparities Task Force. What is that about and what's the need for it? Well, the, uh, we've come to discover uh, that uh, racial and ethnic uh, minorities, particularly um, African Americans and Hispanic Americans, are um, adversely and unduly impacted by coronavirus disease. Uh, their representation in uh, the area of COVID positivity and in the death rate um, is higher than you would expect uh, by percentage of population. And so we need to understand why that is. Uh, I would guess uh, that there are numerous factors involved, uh, some biological, but a lot has to do with the, but the uh, situation and circumstances in which people live, their working uh, situation uh, probably have impacts too. We need to research it, tease it out, and then figure out how to uh, prepare and properly address it when the next uh, pandemic comes. Dr. Conner, you've been a medical doctor for how long? Mm, 25 years or so. Uh, off the top of your head, when you think of this pandemic and you think of this virus and how it has spread and the impact it has had on black and brown communities, any immediate thoughts come to your mind in terms of how to fix this? So the next time this doesn't happen. Well, uh, in the first instance, we know and have known for some time that there are racial and, and uh, disparities in healthcare. Uh, there are disparities in, in uh, insurance, uh, access to insurance. Uh, there are disparities in, um, in income and jobs which pay uh, for insurance uh, as part of your compensation package. There are uh, disparities uh, that are driven by uh, innate racial bias um, in uh, terms of who's providing care. Um, you know, the, the factors are myriad. It's a, an issue that's been known by society for some time. Uh, when, and when a pandemic such as this occurs, it highlights and magnifies those disparities which are already well known. The, the question is how to get about addressing them and change them. And certainly uh, one of the things that, that um, and there are many things that might help, uh, but uh, first and foremost, uh, access to insurance uh, does uh, tend to level the playing field. And what we know is uh, that um, uh, minorities uh, and people who are of low economic status have uh, limited access uh, to good insurance. And, and doctor, would you say that telemedicine, telehealth can be part of the solution? Well, telemedicine uh, can help, uh, particularly in a pandemic, because you can deliver care remotely. One of the things that we uh, observed uh, was uh, that no uh, sector of the healthcare system was really prepared for uh, uh, handling and dealing with this virus. Um, most hospitals do not have large reserves of PPE available to deploy to their workforce when a pandemic hits. Um, and when you consider a private doctor's offices, uh, even less is available there. No one um, stockpiles these things. These, this is the, the job and the role of government uh, to uh, have these, um, these uh, implements, these uh, a PPE, um, uh, this PPE equipment available. Uh, what we're finding, what we know now uh, that so much of this equipment is made offshore. It happens to be made in China and exported across the world. Now, China got hit with the pandemic. They were um, preserving uh, the PPE for their own population, naturally so. And uh, to the extent that their population wasn't able to go to work to produce the PPE, you had uh, supply shortages uh, not only in China, but right straight across the world. So this is um, uh, this supply should be regarded as a strategic national reserve. We need to have our um, vendor manufacturing resources to producing these products and make sure that they're available to Americans uh, when needed.